Hey everyone, Rick here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the very successful, very popular, very excellent game, The Witness, and see what we can learn from it as indie game developers. First things first, The Witness does tutorial really well. This is the very, very, very start of the game. Walking along a corridor gives me a chance to get used to whatever controls I'm doing with a very clear end in sight. And then here it is. This is the entire game right here, which is solving puzzles. And I click and it's pretty obvious that I'm going to click there, and then pretty obvious that I move over to there. And that's the fundamentals, the foundation of the entire game right there. There's no printing on the screen, there's no person saying, now go down the end of the corridor and click on a thing. It's just me moving towards where I see something, and here's another one, and I, I've already, they've trained me what to do. I click down here to start, and then, okay, I guess I need to run the whole way along there like that which is really cool. And then just after two doors, two puzzles, I come out into the world. And this is the second thing I want to talk about that we can learn from The Witness. If you have a look at it, it is dang beautiful. Look how lovely it is. The texturing of it is a little bit painterly looking um, and bright colors, beautiful sky, clouds up in the sky. Everything about it just is very peaceful and tranquil. Uh, and lovely and pretty. And that's the other thing, or uh, another thing that we can learn from The Witness is about the player experience is very consistent. I talk about player experience all the time in every other video I do. If you look at the player experience of The Witness, what is it? I think it's tranquility and and cerebral intellectual problem solving. It's puzzles, but it's peaceful puzzles. It's like sitting down on a beautiful Sunday afternoon with a crossword puzzle. And you'll notice as well, after a while of playing this game, you think to yourself, hang on a minute, there's no music in this game. There's not really much sound at all. There's not a lot in the way of birds tweeting or ambient noises. There's certainly no other characters that I've found yet coming up and, and blabbing at me about stuff. And it's very interesting that if you look at what's the player experience and how do we support that, maybe just having this total tranquility and serenity and I, I'm down here in, next to the water and it's just crystal clear it's like a mirror this water everything about the game is consistent and they haven't gone and said well you know what let's put in some classical music because then that takes you out of the immersion of I'm actually there in this world walking around and why would I have my headphones in listening to classical music and why would there be thousands of birds? And maybe there's a reason that there's no animal life on this, this island. I assume I'm on an island, but I'm not quite sure. So all these things are deliberate. And it says, don't go and put them in your game just because you kind of think you're supposed to have them. If your game doesn't need music, or if it needs a certain kind of music, or it only needs music at certain points, then that's when you do it. If it needs trees, put in trees. If it doesn't need trees, don't put in trees. So long as it supports that magic word again, the player experience. So all of this for me is supporting my experience of that Sunday afternoon with the crossword puzzle, sitting there and chilling out. And there's a dog! <laughs> yeah. uh, and just having a good time, just being peaceful. This game is about being peaceful. And here's the final thing that I personally have learned from The Witness as a game is I find it boring as hell. <laughs> I, I played it for a while, you know, an hour or two or three, and I kind of got just bored. It's, it's beautiful and it's interesting and it's fundamentally cool and all that kind of stuff. But after a while, I just, I'm not a puzzle kind of guy. Like, puzzle mechanics for me, uh, you know, as I run around here, I'm like, oh, I don't really want to have to figure out where to go. That's just not my kind of game. So what can we learn out of that? What can I learn? What can you guys learn out of my particular learning is that not all games are for everyone. You're going to make a game, and there's going to be people like me who come in here and say, it's okay, I guess, but I got a little bit bored. Uh, you know, I, I liked it, but it's not my game. And that's okay. And you want to make a game that really, really, really delights the people who look at this thing here and say, hmm, how do I solve this puzzle? I really must solve this puzzle. This is going to be amazing. Delight those people. And people like me who run around here and say, oh my goodness, I don't want to have to figure this out. Don't worry about them. Say, you know, Rick, this game's not for you. 
So those are the things that I've learned from The Witness, and I think we can learn. There's tons and tons and tons of more things, level design, puzzle design, aesthetic design, artwork, all that kind of stuff. But uh, they were the things I wanted to tell you, and in particular to stress the fact that don't try to make your game for everyone because The Witness is an incredible game. It's highly rated. It's making tons of money. But guys like me, I'm, I'm, I'm not really into it. And as always, hopefully that's been useful for you guys. I love hearing your comments and thoughts. Did you like The Witness? Did you not like The Witness? Is it your sort of game? Uh, please leave some comments below. Like this if you like this video. And I will see you guys in the next video.